I finally got to try one of the most technologically advanced paddles that I've played to date, and I gotta tell you, I was really impressed with it, so stay tuned if you wanna hear about it. Now, what I'm talking about is the Gamma Airbender 16. Now, this is a Torre carbon fiber face, and, and they actually said that they can source their Torre, and they've got the certificate to prove that they have true Torre carbon fiber, that, you know, there's been some talk out there that, you know, companies can't certify that they have the true carbon fiber, this company can. So I, I was impressed with the fact that they at least have a certified Torre carbon fiber. It's not a super high spinning paddle, it's right mid-range on the spin, but the technology that they've put in this paddle is pretty impressive. First, let me just give you the, the basics on this and then I'll tell you how you can adjust it because this is the most adjustable paddle I have ever played to date. We got two throat holes here and you can see the two throat holes here one of them is made for a dampener. I don't have the default dampener in here right now because I want to talk about it without the dampener and then I'm going to talk about the way that the dampener affects the play and what you do with it and the set that you get when you get here. Right off the bat, obviously, we're going very similar to the Selkirks. We've got the holes in the handle here, supposedly to give less wind drag as you swing the paddle. You'll feel it less wind drag with the holes in the bottom. That's the theory behind it. The other cool thing that I think they've done on this edgeless paddle is they've got this nice ribbed edge guard type feeling thing here. It's, it's stiff to the touch and it's going to protect the edge on the edgeless paddle. So this is edgeless to 16 millimeter. It's thermoformed. It's not unibody in the sense that the face goes all the way through and it's not a completely molded handle. So this is not a unibody per se in the traditional sense, right? The carbon face does not extend all the way through the handle and it is not a one piece construction. It's two piece that's molded together here. Out of the gate, when we're looking at this paddle, so here's my weighting on this. I'm going to show you some pictures as I changed the weighting on this to show you the max adjustment you can do on this. As is in my hand right here, without the original shock buster and no butt cap adjustment, this paddle comes in at 8.03 ounces. As I start adding the shock busters, the shock buster that comes in it is this little bitty guy here. And this is a rubber insert that goes in that throat piece that allows you to adjust the weight. And what this does is this one here will take you up to like 8.32 in ounces. So what this does does is this improves the shock absorption of the paddle. So when you hit the paddle, it feels more plush, more soft in its purest form without this in there. It is a semi-powerful paddle. Like it is a good all court paddle. Uh, you could put the ball away with it. You can hit all the shots you want to hit with it. And so I found that it was really playable even in the default without the shock absorber. But as you start adding the shock absorbers, it makes the game change. And so what's cool about it is you get this set. And as you see this set, each one of these will increase the weight by plus three grams. And so you can go up to like nine grams extra weight by putting this black one here in the handle, in the paddle, in that area. The next adjustment they give us is the butt cap adjustment. So same theory applies here. We've got three different butt caps and these guys go up by three grams. And what this does is put weight in the bottom of the handle, which does the same kind of thing. It will move the weight towards the handle. It will make this paddle more head light. Now, what does that do for us? Well, you know, there's a whole argument out there on YouTube about head light versus head heavy. My experience, I've been doing this seven years now, I've tested hundreds of paddles. The more head heavy that you have a paddle, the more you're gonna have plow through, a little bit bigger sweet spot because the paddle has a lot more mass in the head and is able to plow through the ball and be stable out here with the ball hitting out here on the edges, right? So the more weight I have down here, the more the paddle's gonna be able to absorb any of my off-center shots, and the twist weight usually goes up. So typically, we have a higher twist weight for the more head-heavy paddles. What does that do for us? Well, typically, you'll feel it in your shoulder, in your arm. The heavier the paddle gets, the slower you're gonna be able to move the ball because the static weight is, is higher, right? So the paddle has more mass, so it's gonna take more muscles to move the paddle around at the net. But when you lower the swing weight, the head becomes lighter. So then there's a little bit of ability to whip the paddle more, some more you put the weight towards the handle. So if I was just gonna do the butt cap here, right? And so I could put nine grams of weight in the butt cap here. This paddle is going to feel head light. It's gonna feel like a badminton racket. That's the best way I could describe the feeling of it when you have a head light paddle. It's really whippy. You can get the paddle around. You can really whip it, put a lot of spin on it. The, what my notice is, is the more weight I put down here in the handle, the, the faster I'm gonna be 
on those types of shots. But overall, the static weight is going up. My arm is gonna be able to move slower, but my hand will be able to move faster. Does that make sense? <clears throat> because I'm putting the weight in my hand down here in the handle. As we put the weight in front of our hand, right? I'm adding weight in front of my hand. The paddle is gonna feel more head heavy. I'm gonna lose a little bit of that whip, but I'm gonna gain stability in the head of this paddle. The kick point is usually out here on the paddles, right? And so if I put my hand here and I just do a balance point with this weight in it, okay, I'm gonna find the balance point here. There's the balance point of this paddle with the weight in the throat here. Now, if I take this out, I'm gonna keep my finger there. I'm gonna take this out immediately, see what happens? Now the weight goes towards the tip. And so that same thing, when I put this thing back here, my weight, my kick point stays here, right? And so I'm moving, I'm moving my hit point towards the handle, which makes the head lighter. <clears throat> With these shock absorbers, really, really intelligent design here. I've been modifying paddles for years and I typically do a handle mod. I put rubber in the handle. That's what I've been doing for years to make the paddles play this way. I really appreciate the fact that they're putting technology into this and now you got adjustable systems here. But this shock absorber here makes this this paddle feel extremely plush. So without this, this paddle is still a really good solid feeling paddle. It's a little bit more vibrating. It's a 16 millimeter edgeless paddle. So it doesn't have a whole lot of head mass here to really absorb some of the stuff. So a lot of times the edgeless paddles, they have smaller sweet spots, but you can hit all the way out to the edge of them. So you can hit all the way out here to the edge and you're not gonna lose that much power. It's going to feel a little bit smaller sweet spot than those that have the edge guard because the edge guard adds weight to the perimeter of the paddle. This is just pure science at this point because when you add weight out here, you're widening the sweet spot because you're putting more mass outside of the paddle. Make sense? I'll compare this to my Lux. Now my Lux, this is my tournament paddle. This is what I play. Edgeless, you can tell that they're very, very similar in size and shape and uh, same thing with length. They're almost identical in length here as we look at it, but you can see the difference in the thickness here. One's a 20 millimeter, one's a 16 millimeter. So the 16 millimeter is gonna be a little bit more hot. And I found that I appreciated that about the paddle, but it wasn't so hot that I couldn't control it. All that to be said, great technology here. This gear that I showed you, the, the weight system, this all comes with the paddle stock. It's a $200 paddle. With our pirate discount, you get 10% off of that. But can the paddle play? Can all of this stuff help my game? Does it help my game? And how does it perform? So first, let's take a look at the way I did. This is the very first game, the very first few swings I had on this. Let's look at my serves and my returns and see if this paddle cuts it as far as performance goes. As I first started playing the paddle, I was serving and returning a little bit shallow there. The ball was biting more than I was expecting it to. It feels pretty smooth to the touch, but it gets around 1900 on the spin, which is right around middle of the road now. Top tier is 23 or 2400 now, I think, on some of the paddles that are tested. But this one had, for an edgeless paddle, it, it bit pretty well and still was very controllable. I missed several short into the net right there, but that was a lot to do with my footwork, my horrible footwork there. But if you're looking for a controllable paddle, good high twist weight. And I love the adjustable nature of this. I've played it with several different weight adjustments and it definitely made a difference. Right off the bat with the serve and the serve return, I could tell this is more of a mid-tier spinning paddle. So it's not a high spinning paddle, but plenty of spin for what you wanna do with an edgeless paddle. So right off the bat, serves and returns, I felt super comfortable with this paddle. You can see from the performance, so if you're looking for a controllable edgeless paddle that's really sharp looking, this really fits the mold. I was able to do whatever I wanted on the serves and the serves of returns. I was able to apply pressure by getting to that deep third of the court and make sure that I was serving deep and returning deep. And uh, even on my miss hits, on my edge hits, I still felt like the paddle performed well and I didn't feel like it was just a shank, right? Sometimes you hit on the edge of a paddle and it's a shank. It will not go anywhere. This paddle still performed well in that. So right off the bat, it had enough power, right? It, it, I could tell it is not a power paddle. This is not a power paddle. Even with the throat thing out and you're only doing eight ounce paddle, you would have have to add weight out here to the edge and make it more head heavy if you want to get a little bit more swing weight on this is only like 112 so it's very similar to the double black diamond the others in that range same as the Lux, 114 112 ish on the swing weight so you have to increase the swing weight if you want to get more pop on this guy which is fine but you're going to want to take out the dampener if you're going to do that because it's going to just counterbalance and make this even heavier so 832 is what this is with the default dampener that comes in here so you got to be careful with how much weight you want to add to the perimeter here to get that pop but 
let's look at where this paddle really accelerates. I love the drops with this. Take a look at this. This paddle, immediately I was able to start hitting good drop shots. And I think that if you're a control-oriented player and you don't really need a whole lot of help from the paddle, this is doable. And you can see there that I, I'm able to hit some decent drops and some good touch shots with it. So uh, if you have good footwork, not like that right there, where I drop it right into the net. I missed four or five into the net because it was a little bit softer than uh, I felt it would be. And I'm playing with the default setting with the, the base dampener in. This is at about 832 with the dampener in. And it definitely makes it feel softer when you're playing with it with that dampener in. And if you take the dampener out, you get a little bit more pop out of it. The paddle's only about 804, 803 without the dampener in it. And I'm playing with the base end cap, which just comes default in it. I do not believe it has any weight in it whatsoever. The, they go up by increments of three, so it's three, six, and nine. Now I'll say that it took me a little bit to dial in the drops because I kept hitting short. I kept hitting on the very top of the tape and I missed at least four or five drop shots when I played this at first because of the touch on this paddle. It felt like it would be more poppy, but it's not. It's really a great control paddle. I would, I would definitely put it in the all court range and then with the adjustments you can do down here, you could move it into the control range of the paddles the way that we talk about them. But it, once I was able to just get a little little bit more oomph on it. A lot of that's my footwork, okay? I constantly back up when I'm hitting my drop shot. It's not all the paddle. It's usually me and my weight uh, transfer, but for this one, I just missed short a little bit till I got used to it, and then I, I wasn't missing any of the drop shots, any of the control shots, any of the defensive shots. I felt really comfortable there and was able to perform. So if you're looking for the control paddle, this definitely fits that mold without sacrificing so much power until you start really tail weighting this to the max, which with, with full max, here you can see I can go up to 892 with this if I max out the dampener and I max out the butt cap. So I can make it even more controllable there if I do that by increasing that weight, the static weight, and putting the weight in the handle. Because it's a control paddle, how does it do on the power shots? How does it do on the drives with the spin? What can you do with it? Let's take a look and see how I performed when we were doing just the hard shots and the punch volleys and the putbacks and the drives. Because this is a control paddle, you got to put a little bit more work into it. But I found with a, it's got a pretty solid twist weight of 5.57. Five, and so the paddle wasn't twisting in the blocking and the putbacks, but was still able to generate enough power. I don't really need help from the paddle for power. So if you need help from the, the paddle, this is more geared towards the control players that do not need help from the paddle. But really control and precision oriented. But the power was still comparable. I was able to put the ball away and, you know, really able to get uh, some pressure on the opponents. So I think if you uh, are really a power hitter and you like generating a lot of spin and are good at the spin, this paddle will work really well for you. And I found that when I started to drive the ball more and be, get more comfortable with it, I was able to apply pressure and was able to keep the ball low so the, the spin would help. And then the, the, with the twist weight and the blocking ability, you'll be able to really do some damage with this paddle, I think. Partner saved me there. <laughs> you don't want to do that. No pop-ups. Horrible, horrible hand position there. But I, you know, this second game playing with it and, uh, you know, looking at the drives, I think you'll be able to drive well and put pressure on your opponents, especially if you're a high spinner of the ball. I'm not very a high spinner of the ball, so the people that create more spin, they'll be able to do a lot more. Yeah, I don't know what it is about edgeless paddles, but I always feel like you can get a little bit more spin on them when you're hitting. And you can see from those drives and some of those putbacks, this is a comparable paddle for defense. It is not going to be one of the ones that you're going to be able to just put the ball away so easily. You're going to have to put a little bit more into it because it is more of a control leaning paddle. It really still performed well. If you see some of those drives I hit and some of those hard shots, I was still able to hit the ball really hard, but I never really have needed the paddle to help me. So if you need the paddle, 
paddle to help you. If you need the paddle to give you all the power, this isn't the paddle for you. This, like I said, is more of an all court, more control leaning version, even with the dampener out of the neck. But now let's look at the dinks because this is where I feel like I grade all paddles. Like how can I do in the kitchen? How does it feel and how does it play when I'm hitting in the kitchen and doing some dink battles and trying to win a point? Most points are won in the kitchen and this paddle really didn't disappoint here in the kitchen. So if you're really a uh, controller of the ball and you like the orientation of soft paddles, this, this is a softer paddle, but it feels crisp uh, off the face. It's not completely plush. So you, you definitely feel where the ball is at on the paddle face when you're playing it. But as I was starting to dial it in, you could definitely uh, apply pressure and definitely feels really good in the dink battles. Feels felt really comfortable right off the bat in the kitchen. Now I, I do play a lot of paddles, and so uh, this is the way I gauge most of them. Right with the with the power paddles, I have a hard time keeping it in the kitchen. This one here really worked well, and so for the people that love to to dink it out and paddle it out, this paddle really excels in this area and you're able to really do whatever you want yeah. in the kitchen and put a lot of pressure. And this is the second game, and I was really starting to dial in the dink battles and really starting to be able to uh, put the ball where I wanted to put it, and I think that you'll be able to do that in very short order if you're used to the control-oriented paddles. And with a little bit of modification, you can always add a little bit of lead tape to the end of this and make it more powerful where you got a little bit more swing weight, a little bit more plow through to finish the shots off. But good deal in the kitchen there. As you can tell, this paddle really performs in the control game. So I, overall, man, I am really impressed with this paddle. I enjoyed playing it. I actually didn't want to put it down. I wanted to keep playing it, and I'm, I'm probably going to keep playing it. It's going to be in my regular rotation. I was very impressed with what Gamma has done. Gamma has not been the top of the paddle market. Riley Newman was one of the only ones playing their paddle that everybody knew, but they had decent paddles, but they weren't top of the line. I would say with this and their Obsidian line, I have been very impressed with what Gamma has been doing in the paddle market. And I really enjoy this. Good job, Gamma. Thanks for sending us this paddle to review. And thank you for those of you that are using our code. That helps us keep the lights on, helps us keep bringing you these great reviews so you can make good informed decisions on your paddle purchases. This paddle is $199 retail. With our pirate discount, you get an additional 10% off. And I, I tell you, you got to take a swing on this paddle if you like the edgeless paddles and you like everything that you've seen so far. But if you don't like Gamma and you want to see some of our other brands, some of our other reviews, you can check these out.